Welcome back. We continue our explanation of bivariate analysis. Previous in the previous videos, we learned how to do uh, bivariate analysis for two variables when both of them are numerical or both of them are categorical. In this video and the next video, we'll learn how to do that when one variable is categorical and the other one is numerical. In this video, I'll be uh, explaining two or three of these techniques, and in the next video. I'll, ex I'll explain another technique. Uh, I'll be focusing on explaining the z-test z and t-test. Now, before we continue, let's remind ourselves of where we are. Now, we are here doing bivariate analysis, covering when one variable is categorical, when the other one is numerical. And we'll be doing z-test, t-test. ANOVA will do it in the next video. We'll be doing z-test, t-test, the, the bar and line charts. Uh, remember again, we'll do the analysis of variance or ANOVA in the next video. So we have four ways of doing it, line charts with error bars, combination charts, z-test and t-test, statistics or analysis of variance or ANOVA. In this video, I'll cover these three. In the next video, I'll show you how to do analysis of variance. We begin with the first one, line chart with uh, error bars. A line chart with error bars it actually displays information as a series of data points connected by straight line segments. So we have a series of data points connected by uh, line segments. Each data point is average of the numerical data for the corresponding category of the categorical variable with error bar showing standard error. So if you remember the data set for the IRIS data set, this one here, uh, we have sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width and then we have the class we have three classes what 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 this one does is it can we have the average here for the sepal length the first column we have the average for the three classes remember we have three classes iris setosa iris, iris versicola and iris virginica so we compute the average for each of the three classes for the sepal length and then we connect the average values for the three categories for the class we link them up using uh, straight line segments and then these bars here indicate the error so how much d difference does the rest of the values have uh, 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 from the actual average yes so each data point is the average of the numerical data for the corresponding category of the categorical variable with error bar showing standard error so these bars show standard error of the remaining values, you know, values error with respect to the average. It's a way to summarize how pieces of information are related and how they are, how they vary depending on one another. So this is the class, these are the classes and these are the average of sepal length. The second one is the combination chart. Uh, what it does is it uses two or more chart types to emphasize that the chart contains different kinds of information. We've seen this before. Uh, here we use a bar chart to show the distribution of a binned numerical variable and a line chart to show the percentage of the selected category from the categorical variable. We've seen this before and it's actually a good way to visualize metho a method to demonstrate the predictability, pow predictability power. Yes, we've seen this. This is uh, sepal length. This is count. And this is percentage. And we have uh, the uh, uh, um <coughs> bar chart and the line chart as we explained in the previous videos. The important bit in this video is finding the, you know, doing the z-test and the t-test. Usually th they're basically the same. What they do is they assess whether the averages of two groups are statistically different from each other. So the point here is to assess whether the averages of two groups are statistically different. This analysis is appropriate for comparing the averages of a numerical variable for two categories of a categorical variable. So, comparing the averages of a numerical variable for two categories of a categorical variable. I'll explain what that means in the next few slides. The idea here is as follows. We have z statistic equals x1 bar minus x2 bar over the square root of s1 square over n1 plus s2 square over n1 now because we have data then we can compute the average 
x1 bar x2 bar are the averages of the two variables x1 and x2 s1 square s2 square are the variances for the two data for the two variables and n1 n2 are the counts the number of points or the number of values and z is the uh, it assumes a standard normal distribution if the probability of z is small the difference between two, the two averages is more significant so we're looking for small probability the t-test is similar but it's preferred when the number of values is less than 30 so when n1 n2 is less than 30 we use t-test instead of z-test the equation is similar but slightly different so t equals x1 bar minus x2 bar same as for the z-test but we the way we use the variance here is different we compute the variances s1 square s2 square n1 n2 are the counts um, but we compute a value now we call it s square and it's n1 minus 1 times s1 square minus n2 minus 1 times s2 square over n1 plus n2 minus 2 now this value here n1 plus n2 minus 2 is the degree of freedom and the t-test has t distribution so it has t distribution with degree of freedom of uh, n plus n1 plus n2 minus 2 so the equation here is different could be the t x1 bar minus x2 bar over square root of s square s square is this you know we plug in uh, the n's and the s one uh, s square so the averages and the variances the averages and variances and the counts we plug them in to compute s square and then we use it to compute s um, i'm sorry to compute t which is x1 bar minus x2 bar over square root of s square times 1, o 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 remember x1 bar x2 bar are the averages n1 n2 are the counts or the number of values s1 square s2 square are the variances notice the difference the slight difference in computing t and z is in the way we plug in the uh, uh, variances averages and counts now let's take an example just remember that we use t-test when number of points is less than 30 that's just uh, uh, how people usually do it now take an example is there a significant difference between the means or the averages of the numerical variable which is the temperature we've seen this before for the o-ring failure so the numerical variable is the temperature in the two different categories of the categorical variable we have two categories of the o-ring failure yes or no and what we do is we find the temperature values or the numerical values for the class yes and the numerical values for the class no so for temperatures for class yes are these one two three four five six seven and then for the no we have 17 remember we had 24 points now we compute the count for each of them seven for the yes seven, uh, 17 for the no we compute the mean we sum and then divide by the number so here divide by 7 here sum and divide by 17 we compute the variance for yes and for no and now we compute the t and the degree of freedom the degree of freedom is n1 plus one, n1 the degree of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus uh, uh, is it 2 or 1 minus 2 yes so 7 plus 17 minus 2 that's 24 minus 2 is 22 again we plug all these the mean variance and count to compute s square and then we plug s square we plug that in into compute t and then we res end up with a value of t minus 2.62 now after after computing the t value we use it to find the probability we find it in a t table uh, we find p or the probability and for a t value of minus 2.62 the probability the corresponding probability is 0.0156 it's a low probability so here we have the low probability means that the difference between the average temperature for failed or ring and the average temperature for intact or uh, uh, not failed or ring is significant so remember before we said if the probability is low that means the difference is significant right I'm going to stop here in the next video I'll continue my explanation of bivariate analysis uh, when we have one variable is categorical other one is numerical and I'll explain the ANOVA technique or the analysis of variance 
Thanks again, I'll, and I'll see you next time.